I, I bring you the very warm greetings of the president, President Muhammad Buhari, and who sends his personal felicitations and especially uh, congratulations on the 34th anniversary of this great state. I was here on the 23rd of September 2017 for the 30th anniversary of this state. And again, I was here on September the 21st, 2019 to celebrate the 32nd anniversary of this state. Uh, on that occasion, after so many uh, visits in between, I was offered full citizenship of Akwa Ibom State. <laughs> The, the God, uh, so I was a bit surprised. I was a bit surprised when I heard the master of ceremonies moving the goalpost, suggesting that perhaps I needed to learn another language before. Uh, so <laughs> at that time, the governor promised to find me an appropriate local government uh, where, uh, from where I would operate. But I assume that the COVID-19 pandemic has prevented uh, him from completing that search for an appropriate local government. But today I will claim my own local government. Yeah. <laughs> and I will let you know that before I leave Akwa Ibom State. Okay. Nevertheless, it's always a delight to visit Akwa Ibom State. Uh, and especially because every time one is here, there's a milestone achievement. And again, today there's a milestone moment in the state's history. The peace, tranquility, and hospitality which the state is known for is the envy of many states. And it shows, and it shows you what can be achieved in our nation when we decide to put in the work that is required. Since its creation 34 years ago, Aquaibom has consistently reinvented itself to remain competitive and attractive for investment and the investment community has responded. It is remarkable what Aquaibom has been able to achieve in this period. Today we are here to flag off the construction of the Dakada luxury estate and later on the Dakada Tower as part of the activities to mark the 34th anniversary of the state. I'm very proud of what my brother Governor Emmanuel Governor Dom Emmanuel has achieved in, his la in the last six years of stewardship as governor of this state. And I'm particularly, I'm particularly pleased, I'm particularly impressed, as, as I'm sure so many are, with his industrialization agenda. When I was here in 2019, we commissioned the King's Flour Mills, the Lions Plywood and Timber Factory, and the Power Substation. We had also Prior to that, prior to that, we had commissioned the syringe factory, we had commissioned the metering uh, factory as well. Since then, he has done far more and has even launched uh, the airline, Ibom Air, which has become, which has become the gold standard for nationally, for promptness and for effe uh, efficient service. Your focus, Your Excellency, on infrastructure development is significantly in sync with what the federal government itself wants to do and what the federal government has been doing. As you are aware, since the inception of our administration, Mr. President has prioritized the development of infrastructure, roads, rail, power, and broadband connectivity. And despite the severe economic headwinds, that we have experienced in the past six years, we have invested more than any other federal administration in infrastructure. As of last year, we had expended over 8.9 trillion on capital. Just last month, the Federal Executive Council approved the Lagos Calabar Rail Project, which will pass through Uyo as a major railway station. And at the end of last year, the Federal Executive Council with your very active pushing and your very active, uh, your very active involvement, approved the full business case for the Ibom Deep Sea Port. And you know, of course, that that is already underway. These, all of these infrastructural developments are set to establish Akwa Ibom as a major industrial hub, not just for Nigeria, but in the West African sub-region. 
this Ibom, uh, this uh, Dakada luxury estate is also strategic. Investors from around the world and management and industry, uh, all, of, all of their staff, and their management staff and other staff will want to come here, but they also want to have world-class accommodation. They want to have a safe place to live and to bring, and to bring their families to and to raise their children. So this luxury estate is the answer to that need. I'm told that the estate, and of course we've heard already a lot about what will be in this estate, and all of what we expect to see here will certainly meet the expectations and standards of those who will want to live here. When completed, we have already been told that it will have a police station, power substation, and even supplementary power by way of a turbine that would do uh, 15 megahertz in capacity. Clinics, healthcare centers, a glass pla gas plant, sewage plant, civic center, church, school, and other amenities. So this is designed to be a, a place, a home, where people can really stay and uh, raise their families over uh, a an extended period of time. There's, a, there's also, of course, the multiplier economic benefits that we'll, that we'll experience here. Housing projects create several direct and indirect jobs. And this is one of the very important reasons why this project will be very important. Housing projects are very critical because they provide jobs. Aside from providing decent shelter, this is an important job creator. So this project will provide several jobs during construction and post-construction, and several ancillary jobs. And of course, there will be property taxation, which will form additional streams of income for the state's coffers, which is why as part of the federal government's economic sustainability plan, we have our mass social housing program. This is part of our Jobs for Houses program run by the Family Homes Fund, where we intend to build 300,000 housing units across the country. We intend to use local materials, builders and artisans in every state. Already 24 states have given land and developments have started. And I'm pleased to note, and, I, and the governor has already alluded to it, that Aquaibom has already keyed into this important program and has already made land available as a matter of fact, already, I believe that a certain, I think it's about 650 housing units that will be built here. And already that has started. I believe that almost 60 or so have already been completed. So, the, uh, so this, and I believe it's called the Dakada Affordable Housing Scheme, which uh, is, uh, as I've said, supported by the federal government. So housing is the way to unlock capital for individual and corporate prosperity, but it requires executive and legislative collaboration to ensure its success. So I urge the State House of Assembly to continue to work with the executive to make all land and administrative processes friendly and seamless so that people can obtain uh, their, their uh, certificates of occupancy and other land documents seamlessly. This will revolutionize real estate in this, uh, in, in this uh, state and unlock more investment opportunities for Aquaibo. I look forward to coming back here for the grand opening of this estate when it is fully completed. But before I sit, I want to say, you know, just before uh, the, the flag off, I want to pray that all of the developments that we have seen uh, in Aquaibo, that the Lord God Almighty will sustain it. Um, and that the people of this state even as you are benefiting already, you will continue to benefit from the improvements here in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Each one of you, each person in this state will prosper. Amen. Each person will see and eat of the fruit of this land Amen. in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we will approach, we will go uh, in a moment for the flag off. Uh, and I, I hope that... Um, as we do so, this will just be the beginning of several other luxury estates and several other housing projects. Thank you very much. God bless you.